the most of the weight that had gone. Then I wasn't quite happy with myself. I must say, I looked like a plucked turkey a little bit. The, the, the skin didn't quite follow the weight loss, you know. Thomas, how did you find carnivore? Well, yeah, um, I was fat shamed. I, my family was brave enough to tell me I uh, picked up 60 pounds and it's time to lose it. And I looked it up on the internet. I thought, how am I going to do this? Uh, yeah. And I, and I went on to Google and I went on to one site that actually had all types of diets and this diet and, and they had the carnivore diet on there. And they explained me that you only eat animals. They were non-committal. They were, it was not a site against or odd. They were just, that's it. And I thought, I can do that. I, I love meat. And I started the next day. So my start is the idiot guide of starting the dark carnivore diet because I, I did no research. I thought I can do that. I, I must probably start it wrong, and I did start wrong. Uh, we got I ate any animal product that I included dairy, I included cheese, I included everything. But within three weeks, I still had tremendous results, and uh, so I kept on. And then obviously, I decided I, I, I need a bit more information. What am I doing here? You know, am I killing myself or whatever? And uh, so I started changing the diet slightly i became more lion diet i i'd naturally gravitate to that i just enjoy it the most i i eat mostly steaks and left the eggs don't don't fancy eggs anymore i don't know why they don't taste the same anymore even bacon very little so it's mostly that and i've been on it now for 10 months uh, feeling absolutely great lost all that 60 pounds and what i didn't know that I'm going to gain so much on my health. That was an amazing bonus to this whole way of eating. I didn't even know I was sick. I mean, I had gout. I never knew that a normal diet could cure gout. And I hadn't had gout in 10 months. So that, that alone is, is worth every cent, every cent spent on a cow. Yeah, so we were a little bit nervous going in up front because, like, everyone tells you that meat is one of the, the biggest contributors to gout. So weren't you worried? No, uh, funny enough, I wasn't. I, I, I never actually thought about that. I, uh, I, I saw my doctor, well, socially, actually. I, I wasn't in his uh, surgery or anything. And I said to him, like, well, what should I do about the gout? And he actually said, you know, well, I'm just going to put you on allopurinol for now, and that should let's see what 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 the gout is. And I said, what what? And I also asked him about diet, and he was the one that that actually said, well, you're going to have to trial and error here. We, we, I don't know what causes your gout. So he, uh, thank God for him. He he was actually very open to this whole thing. Uh, because I know him, so we have a very small community here, so we all know each other socially. And, and, and that, uh, I mean, I think I stepped into his surgery the last time 15 years ago. So I, I am not sending him to the Bahamas for sure. Um, but so I started, and three months later, only when I started to, to do the research, I, said, I, I realized I'm still taking, taking the allopurinol, but I, I'm not having any in any gut attacks you know and i stopped it about three months in and kept kept on like that and, and that, that's why i just started looking at your channel and looking at other channels I, I didn't even realize things that i had that people bring up and then i have to look at my body oh yeah that's right that, that that's gone too yeah and there was for instance there was a, a lady it, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a chat group on facebook and she said her, that her the callous heels have uh, cured. And I thought, that's weird. And I looked down, I thought, oh, yeah, where are my calluses? They're just gone. So I didn't do anything. I didn't rasp them away, nothing. I'd never had it as bad. I, I had a few on my toes. And they're gone. And so I, th th this time, it really, for anybody that wants to do it, and if you think you're not sick, Think again, because I thought I was quite healthy, and turns out I wasn't. And all these little niggles and things that people tell you, oh, people at your age, you know, you can expect that. Don't expect it. 
they don't need to be there and you, you can enjoy life you can carry on again and that's the most wonderful part about it that's awesome so just to just to kind of summarize so far so you've been on this 10 months you've lost Correct, yes, all, of, all of that weight so 60 pounds i lost actually a little bit more than i wanted to i i, I thought of 60 but i'm actually going on to close to 70 now which is still yeah. fine i, I I'm not skinny or anything. It's, 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 that's just a bonus, I think. But uh, I was always around, I'd have to think in kilograms now, sorry, we don't do pounds, but I was always around the 80 kilogram pounds. Uh, so 190 pounds, I think it is, 80 kilograms. And uh, so I thought if I could get there, then then I'm happy. It just didn't stop. And it, it went down and it went, and then it was 75 kilograms, which is a... Uh, 160, 70 pounds or something. Now I'm 160 pounds. That's here. I think it, it, it looks like that. That's where it is. I'm 158, 162. That's where I think I'm, 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 I'm happiest at. So that's where I'm keeping it. I never did any challenges or anything. I, I just had it going and I lost every month about seven pounds, around about three and a half kilos, seven pounds. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't. I, I was so happy with that. I didn't need to accelerate. I didn't get uh, frustrated. I just carried on there. Yeah. And within six months, it, 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 it most of the weight had, had gone. Then I wasn't quite happy with myself. I must say, I looked like a plucked turkey a little bit. The, the, the skin didn't quite follow the weight loss, you know. And that took another three months. And that's when I lost, started losing the, the skin. And the three months afterwards, I started losing the last 10 pounds. So it was actually a good thing that I stalled in a sense, because otherwise I would have looked like a bag of potatoes that got wet. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. So, so you mean like the skin's tightening up? Yes, it is definitely tightening up. I, I had for a long time, I had this ring of skin around my stomach, which is now starting to I, I can see definite improvement within three months and uh, you know so uh, the next three months was probably even more and even more uh, so i'm quite happy about that because that's not not, not very nice to have and uh, so I, I promised myself for my 60th birthday that i'm gonna have a six pack on the stomach uh, so i'm gonna have to start doing some intense exercises on that area <laughs> But uh, you, you get boisterous when you feel that good. You, you do things that you should, you shouldn't do anymore. Uh, I do 50 push-ups a day now. I, I couldn't do three in the beginning, uh, like one and a half, but the third were huffing and puffing. And now I'm doing 50, 60 push-ups. Yeah? So, and that's before I start working. And I do very physical work on the farm. So, uh, you know, I, I think I get enough exercise in. I just have to target the right areas now. So, um, like, how is your family now? You mentioned at the start that they had kind of fat shamed you by talking about the weight. Like, wh what's their feeling now about where you are? Okay, my mother was actually the worst on the fat shaming, and she's 83. And in solidarity, she started the diet with me. Also, let's let's do it. Let's go for it. And I think the next day we bought about uh, ten kilograms of, of meat, and that that was it. You know? And she had tremendous uh, success on it. You know, I mean, obviously with uh, at that age, there's arthritis and blood pressure and all that, and then all all didn't resolve. But at this age, I don't think you know we have blood pressure comes more from a heart murmur than actual stress or anything so she will always have a slight heart pressure but, but she she says she feels a hundred she, she's not light-headed anymore she she mowed the lawn the other day which is not quite small here this i've got 21 hectares so at 83 years you know, old at 83 years old yeah she painted, I, I painted the house and I left some of the porches. I, I lost a bit of interest. House painting, painting in me is not my fact. She finished that for me up on the ladder and finishes off the porches. Yeah. So 
it is, and she she does this is not quite as strict as me she will have a honey bread in the morning and a bit of that in the afternoon and a bit of salami but mainly she is she's a carnivore and she's also there i'm sticking to that one that makes me feel like brand new yeah that's awesome um and so how are you eating from day to day at the moment um, me day to day is mostly twice a day uh, it's just how it works out uh, sometimes once a day uh, but purely if i forget to eat or i'm too busy to eat then I, if, I, if i get busy in the morning i'm, I'm up, up very early in the morning up, up at about two three o'clock in the morning doing things and then so about eight o'clock nine o'clock i actually call it my lunch and I'm, I'm starving and then i eat quite a bit uh, mostly steak i do a t-bone or something like that and sometimes two t-bones i don't count calories so i eat till i'm full and uh, then in the afternoon it's usually a little bit less uh, three four o'clock uh, i actually do have a cup of coffee with cream and then i'm thinking uh, maybe a bit of maybe a small little minute steak or something with that if i'm hungry and then the, usually the cup of coffee with cream seems to to do it to me i justify the cream because i think i do enough during the day to 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 warrant a bit of bad behavior yeah so uh, i'm fine with, with the cream and uh, that's all i eat really um quite quite easy quite normal nice and i mean you talked about getting up early in the morning and you're working on a farm like what what work does this entail like are you um you got livestock there it, it, this is a game farm uh, we, we've got a lot of game around i got horses uh, it, it's actually not so much for the farm that i get up, up so early it is I, I don't know why i've done this for the last 30 years two or three o'clock in the morning i get up i seem to be my brightest thinking uh, cap is on and everything and i can do everything in the morning we actually have to think emails all of that and i've got that done and then and secondly you know i start work here as soon as I, the, whatever i'm doing on the farm if i have to fix something or milk the tractor kick the cow whatever the, the case is you know that i do it very early in the morning because by 10 o'clock in the morning it's like 40 degrees celsius here so you, you try to get everything before the sun comes up you know and uh, yeah and then we feed the animals and do all that and by i'm building a house at the moment and this is all that i'm blaming the carnival diet for that i'm building a tiny house on my farm i hate tiny houses it's just i had this notion of doing something with you know eco-friendly reclaimed it's completely reclaimed materials it's built out of beer bottles and old poles and and an old sink and all that so nothing is straight so it's a terrible idea to do something like that and uh, but yeah um, that's what I'm busy in the mornings now with. Yeah? I want to get it finished before my energy leaves me again. <laughs> so, so just to be clear, you're building a, a small house out of beer bottles. Yes, yes. It, uh, wow. I went to the every. I went to every local watering hole and pub and restaurant and collected beer bottles and cut them up and made bricks out of them and built the house with beer bottles. 12 months ago before you did before you started carnivore or, or lion um would you have had the energy to do this no it was actually a project that i started 10 years ago and i left it well my excuse was i i, I lost interest no i lost energy so i had to admit that to myself and then the other day i but a month ago, two months ago, I decided no, I, I, this is a folly. I'm going to finish it. Yeah, and uh, it actually went very quickly. Now I mean, it's still not finished, but it, it, it's I, I, I see an end date coming. So I think another month or two I should be there. 
So yeah, and then the, everything I do now, I would have thought of doing. I, I painted the whole house. I, I, I repainted the roof. I, I built. I, I even to, you know everything to do over. Uh, I don't have to delegate anymore. If I feel like fixing a fence, I'll fix the fence. I don't have to find somebody to fix the fence for me because I can't walk 10 meters. And yes, that, that's what I was. You, you know, if you have 60 pounds, you don't bend down very easily. So you, you delegate a lot. So, and, and, and as it is now, I have no workers on the farm. I do everything myself. Yeah. So looking after them at the moment, luckily we don't have any uh, orphan uh, game or something like that because I usually my stables are full with some orphan zebra which I have to feed or uh, the last thing I had was a rock python that, that was not a friendly character so, so sorry to interrupt I was going to ask like that is actually a, a barn that you're sitting in that's not a virtual background I'm sitting in my barn yes this, this is a barn this is my stable uh, we, we're in trying times in South Africa and uh this is the best internet connection I have. And for my last six days, this is where the internet works. It doesn't work in my house. I have to come to the barn. I don't know if they want to give me the complete Christmas experiences. I'm not sure that I have to sit in the stable, but it works perfectly. Here. And the, the, this is, it's got something to do with, with our, we, we have very electrical problems. So the whole grid is, we're lucky if we got four, six, seven hours of electricity a day. So that's most probably the, 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 the cell phone towers or something also affected through that. But yeah, I've got perfect internet. So I'm going to have to move my office into the barn next to the chickens. Yeah. So that's and all good. It's trying times. Keeps us alive. So <laughs> you mentioned, though, that um, it's like 40 degrees there. You're talking centigrade, right? I'm talking centigrade, yeah. Yeah, so doesn't it get warm in there? <laughs> oh, no, it, it's actually open. It's As you can see, let me just see if I can see it on the picture. This is all open on the sides, on the top. Oh, so there's quite some air, air going through. It's a double roof type of thing. So there's a nice breeze going through there. Have Since you've been doing this, has anyone approached you, like your your friends or other relatives outside of uh, your have, mother and said, like, what happened? Uh, they have. They, they, there's two types of friends. Uh, I've noticed that the, uh, the one is very interested and is trying. Uh, he, he's got a big sugar addiction. But uh, his name is Ian, and I, I think he is going to succeed in it. Um, other friends that come up to you and they're like, oh, you lost so much weight. Are you sick? And, and then, then I, I, I get very offensive, offended and, and, and abrupt. I don't know. I don't like that. And I usually, no, I'm not anymore, but you are you're fatty. And uh, I'm fat shaming everybody these days. Uh, I'm old enough to do it. So what they're going to do, kick my face in or whatever. Yeah. But uh, it has become such a norm, fat people, so that they, that, that anybody in normal weight is, is considered unhealthy. And I don't take that very lightly. Yeah. I don't like that. And uh, I mean, my, one of my neighbors, I don't see him very often. I've met him in town. Hey, oh, he's sick. He's sick. And he's like 25 years old or something. He weighs 300 pounds. Yeah. And he's asking me if I'm sick. It's a weird, weird world we live in. <laughs> Generally, how's the population in South Africa um, as far as obesity? I mean, is it is it pretty high rate? It is. It is very high rate the obesity, and that's the, unfortunately to do with poverty. Is uh, you know, I come to the conclusion conclusion that to to look poor costs a lot of money these days. To look, to be poor, you're as fat as hell. And it's just to do with the cheap food you, they have to sell them and they have to eat to survive. You know, uh, like meat was always a very intricate part, and it still is an intricate part in, in, in society and culture. It is, well, every wedding there has to be a traditional slaughter, every funeral there's a slaughter. We slaughter animal for anything just to eat it here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, 
during the during the week it's maize meal it's porridge it's uh, you know we have a i think 40 percent or 50 percent unemployment right now so and then the, the diet thing just doesn't work anymore and the government's answer to all that because we do have a diabetes epidemic now uh well free free diabetes pills at every clinic so that that's the answer to that problem not that we're addressing the actual di uh, diet yeah. but i think that's worldwide that's not only us but i, I imagine when you you talk about the kind of rolling uh power stoppages and stuff like that i mean that makes it even that makes it hard to keep meat to be able to cook and stuff like that right yeah it does um uh, look uh, south africans we, we've been through this for the last i don't know 100 years we're quite resilient we make a plan with everything so i don't think that's the biggest the biggest worry is how to keep meat and that and uh, but in in townships in very rural areas there was never electricity in the first place i don't think half of them have electricity so they always made a plan somehow. I made a plan. I've got full on solar. We're running completely on solar here. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's 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 trying in times here. But you know what? It, it's all good because it keeps you focused. You, you start actually realizing what is very important in your life. And uh, there's so many things you actually don't need. You know, with this carnivore diet, it is it's wonderful. I, I need my health as long as I can think. I'm fine with you. I'm wonderful. And do you, is there much of a climate there about, you know, you shouldn't eat meat, kind of uh, more uh, vegan no. type? Uh, no, they're trying. But as I said, from a cultural aspect, I, I don't think this will work here. And they're trying very hard. But as a cultural aspect, if you tell, you know, at, at the wedding, you can't kill your ox or something uh, they're gonna start polishing their pitchforks you know that, that's not gonna go down very well and so that that is kept very quiet um on the on the sidelines there's always as oh eat you eat this eat that you know that there's always but mainly south africa is it's a barbecue heaven uh, i barbecue four times a week so and everybody i think does uh, at least a weekend so it is uh, yeah to tell anybody you can't eat meat i think you, you're gonna run into trouble a lot of people try to cut down because of the narrative but on the up and down and, and what they do here as well what i've noticed there's a lot of pressure on the government to put bigger labels of, of the poisonous stuff in the in, in, and they mentioned Kellogg's cornflakes, you know, what they that they want the labels bigger of the dangers. So, and that's quite a big campaign. There's even ads on TV about that. So, I'm, I'm quite surprised about that, that they're going that far. And I know, for instance, they had to take off that product, vegan chickens, of the market uh, because they said they can't, it is, if it's not chicken, it's not chicken. You can't name a chicken. And they actually had to take it off the shelves. Yeah. So I'm quite surprised at some things that uh, happened there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing away to myself when you said vegan chicken. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> any, uh, do you have any shine, idea what? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any idea what kind of ingredients were in that? I I don't know. I, I believe it was a vegetable based pulp. And it's like beyond meat or something like that. And they decided to, to, to market it as vegan chicken, vegan chicken steak or vegan chicken burger or something like that. And they, they were forced to take it off the, off the shelves. So I am very surprised sometimes, you know, you hear all these different things and then they come up with a furlough like that, which is absolutely true. I think they should have been taken off the market. Yeah. So yeah, it's, the, it, it, it's kind of like what's this tofu or vegan chicken what's this tofu or yes, ba yes. vegan bacon it's yeah it could, could be anything you know and uh you know i, I have a lovely butcher for, for for me and this is what i eat now he, he did some research 
there's a small little butcher and he did some research and he came up that I think it's it's it's, it's an Israeli or Jewish thing, Macon. He makes bacon out of beef, very nicely sliced. And he says, you know, he made this for me because he knows I like my beef. Damn, is it nice. I don't know how he cures it or whatever, but damn, is it nice. You know, I can eat a packet of that stuff. So Macon. this is how they are. Oh, wow. Well. They call it Macon. Yeah, I think it's because it's made out of beef or something. I don't know where he got the recipe from. And I love it. it is, it's great. It's better than bacon, actually. And it's bigger. It's quite a nice, and it's done in two seconds. So yeah, this is this is how I get supported here. That this is a nice part of it, you know. My my butcher supports me completely, and he comes up with recipes. and And I told him, in no more sauces, no more this. And he comes up, oh, I made another thing he made for me. It's actually called a, a tortoise. In, 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 if you uh, translate it. It's actually a, a, a liver wrapped in sheep's netting, nicely spiced, and so you can um, disguise the taste of liver if you're not too keen on liver. And he knows that I should actually eat some, and uh, he made me these, and they're delicious. Yeah, so, and you don't really know that you're eating liver. So this is great for me. This is, uh, you know, so your environment has a lot to do with how you survive living like this you know the uh, you know you mentioned the barbecues and i've heard that you know often um one of the most popular things in south africa is having a braai so right, yes. what, what what is the most what's the most popular kind of uh, meat there is it beef or it's pork, mostly chicken? beef mostly beef um come chicken Chicken is popular because it's cheap, I think. But beef, beef and lamb, I think, would be the the, the two things. Then we, we have something like a sausage. Uh, they call it a burrowars. It's a it's, it's, it's a local farmer sausage. That that is quite popular as well. But that's purely meat stuffed in some with a bit of spices stuffed in some um, in their intestine, and that's it. You know, so I eat quite a lot of that too. And that's bit cheaper than me so it's difficult to say what is the most popular is it the most popular at the moment is the cheapest so yes chicken and sausage so we're we're doing this interview now it's about 12 p.m your time so uh, yes, uh, yes. this is um kind of um getting towards the end of your work day now yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty done for the day. I, 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 as I say, today is really, really hot. And uh, I started this morning. I have the sewage to do, as so I have to dig a big hole to put this tank in for the sewage. And I did about two hours this morning, and, and I'm not standing out there in the sun and carrying on. So I'm going to start again in the morning and do every morning a little bit, and hopefully three, four days' time I, I got that hole dug up, you know. Luckily, there's no rocks, so it is, it is quite easy, but it's still sweaty stuff. Yeah, the summer's brutal in South Africa. I, I, I kind of found it very similar to the summer in, you know, Melbourne or Sydney or some somewhere like that. Yeah, it, 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 yeah, yeah, especially in the bushveld where I am and, and up north of Pretoria, we don't really have a winter. So, you know, our, our cold snap is about three weeks. So, and, and summers are really, and we haven't had rains yet, so it is brutally hot, and no, no relief yet. You know? So, usually October is suicide month because it hasn't rained yet and it's so hot. But we had suicide months now for three months already. So let's hope. Let's hope there's rain. So you said you're up north. I'm not. I I can't really remember the geography very well. But are you getting close to the Zimbabwe border where you are? Or no, I'm not that far. I'm about a hundred kilometers out of Pretoria, uh, going up towards the, the the border of Zimbabwe. But uh, I would presume you have to travel another five hundred kilometers to get to the border. So roundabout. But I'm on that on that route here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, Thomas, if if people want to reach out to you, do you have a YouTube or an Instagram or anything? I don't have a YouTube channel. I, I'm on Facebook. That's about it. I, I never thought I thought of doing a channel, but I don't think I have enough interesting stuff about. Uh, you know, I do. This is completely unscientific, really. This this whole approach you know i do so selfishly reasons just to feel good you know i, I watched some channels where they say what is your why uh, me is my why i i want to feel good i'm totally selfish of that you know and uh, i don't really have any I, I, i've never had a blood test done I, in my whole life i never had a blood test done so I, I don't even know if i can tell you if i'm still alive so I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah, but but I think it's a good idea to to say that because that's how easy the diet is. You know that you don't have to worry about this and worry about that. Just do it. You know, just carry on. If I feel sick, I go to the hospital. If if I don't feel sick, I don't need a blood test yet. I don't really care. So different attitudes make different people. You know. <laughs> I find it wonderful just doing the things and finding out for that. I, I, I call it unscientifically QBE, qualified by experience, where you just do things and then, then you report back. It's a good way to be. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thomas, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your journey with us. I really appreciate it. Great stuff. Thanks for having me.